I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today we're looking at toothpick quads, and it's kind of got me wondering, what even is a toothpick quad? Originally, a toothpick was a kebab. Bob Ruge took the guts of a mobula, took the frame off of it, and changed it from a ducted Tiny Whoop style frame over to an open prop frame with two-inch props, and it flew amazing. But the term toothpick has really expanded. I see things being referred to as toothpicks, and I'm like, so I want to introduce you guys to my new toothpick design. This is the JB 13-inch toothpick. Okay, well, okay, maybe this is going too far, but... The quads we're looking at today, I think, really make you think about what the definition of a toothpick is. This here is the Emacs Freestyle, and this here is the Full Speed Toothpick Pro 4S. Is that a toothpick? But is it a good quad? That's what we're going to find out. The first question that a lot of you guys are going to ask is why am I reviewing these two quads in the same video? Because these are very, very different quads. The Emacs Freestyle is much smaller, much lighter. This is about 80 grams compared to the full speed, which is about 125 grams. The Emacs runs on 2S battery. The full speed runs on a 4S battery in a big honking battery. Is that about a 450? It's a big honking battery. The Emacs has 1103 motors and the full speed has 1106 motors. So the full speed are twice as tall, the same diameter though. These are very, very different quads. So why are they in the same video? The truth is I've been interested in the toothpick form factor ever since Bob Ruge, Kebab FPV. I'm pretty sure he invented it. So when I received the full speed toothpick pro in the mail, I was like, what, what even is a toothpick anymore? This, is this a toothpick now? Well, who cares? The point is not to like draw some arbitrary line in what is and isn't a toothpick. The point is, first of all, if you go out and you buy something called a toothpick, you want to think about what you're getting. Make sure you know what you're getting because you could get something like this, which is a lot closer to Kebab's original intent for a toothpick. And in fact, I'm pretty sure Kebab worked with Emacs on this to help refine this. But you could be getting something like this, which although it may not be a toothpick in the original sense, there's still a lot to be said for it. Let's find out. How does this guy fly? How does it fly differently than this guy? And which one's better? Well, which one's better for you? Battery's holding in there pretty good. Oh gosh. RSSI low. RSSI may not be the best. I've got the up tilt pegged because I wanted to see how it like raced a little bit. Not just freestyle it at low, R R low up tilt. So the up tilt is probably 45, maybe 50. It's not sagging out. Even on the straights, yeah. the receiver is not the best. It's okay. It's getting the job done, but it's not a like a super long range receiver. I'm really impressed that the battery is not just sagging out when we're. A lot of times, if you go to full up tilt on these little quads, and you really push the battery, it just sags out on you. RSSI low. A little freestyle. It's going too fast to like freestyle exactly. I think I might have a bent prop. That's why I'm getting a little bit of jiggle in the in the video. So RSSI low. Three point seven minute and 30 flight time. I mean, I'm not exactly holding back. I don't adore the camera. It can be a little hard to see what's going on. Yikes. Flight's well, pretty good. RSSI low. See, we're getting low RSSI even just there. 
coming in here, the darkness is a little hard to see what's going on. Get, their, get used to the rates here. Oh, hello. Telemetry lost. Don't land in the pool, don't land in the pool, don't land in the pool. Let's see if we can turtle out of this scenario. Critical. Oh, I can see the bent prop. Okay, have I got a bent prop? <laughs> so here's what happened in that crash. Um, first of all, we broke one, two, three props in that crash. I'm not sure how many of those breaks were in the crash and how many were in the subsequent turtle mode, but we were not going to get up and fly home. Well, you, you could have flown home on that, I guess, but <laughs> might not have been a good idea. And we've got some the motor wires. I don't know how that happened. Like if they got, they must have gotten snagged by the broken prop, I guess. So I guess it's a good thing that the motor wires didn't break and get cut. But yeah, you're definitely going to want to deal with that. When we get back in on the bench, let's see if we can find a way to deal with that scenario and help prevent that from happening. Mm. Well, it'll take me a minute to adjust. It's a lot slower. The rates are a little different too. It's slower because it has less up tilt. The camera has adjustable up tilt, but you can't just, you have to move it to a different slot in the top plate. You can't just wiggle it to a higher up tilt. So I have left it on the stock up tilt. Oh, it, it goes though. The 25 milliwatt VTX is definitely affecting our range. You can see the RSSI is also Maybe, I don't know, let's try, let's try flying away. We should be able to get down here on 25 milliwatts. Yeah, the RSSI is hanging in there. Camera has some fisheye. There we go. The camera has some fisheye that's a little unfortunate. It's a little wide angle. I definitely notice it when I like pitch forward flying through these areas. RSSI low. The receiver seems to be about the same. The video is definitely worse because the full speed was at 600 milliwatts. Oh, hello. I'm not getting up out of that grass. I gotta go get it. What happened there was that uh, I dropped throttle to get underneath that branch. I could see that I was about to hit it, but this little guy is so light <laughs> that it didn't really fall as fast as I expected it to. So. I like the camera. The camera looks decent. Maybe turn the brightness up a little on my fat sharks. Get some of those shadows to come back. I don't know. It's the camera. We'd have to adjust the camera. They're not coming back. Try to do stuff that's a little more appropriate. Let's not end up in the pool. A little sort of fun proximity stuff. Rapid fire is struggling with this weak signal. I saw it wavering a little. See, I'm flying it. Oh, wow. The way that the highlight resolved to detail there was terrible. Check out, see if I can reproduce it. We got a highlight coming through here where it's this overexposed area, right? And as it, let me get back in here. See, it's completely blown out. Look at the house. It's completely blown out to white. And as I come over here, the image adjusts and all, and just stuff appears out of the fog as if. I don't love that. The contrast on the camera looks pretty good. The color looks good, but the way it's handling the highlights is pretty bad. See? Oh, it just completely... There we go. And it comes in. So the highlights are just completely blowing out. That's too bad. There's no fling here. See, I tried to fling it there, but there's no fling. Got to remember I'm flying... A, oh, wow, nice stop there. Got to remember I'm flying a little light quad and kind of got to... Oh, it's down. Kind of got to stay on the throttle a little more. You can't just count on a, a little throttle punch and a fling to get you there. I really felt like the props were holding back the Full Speed Toothpick Pro, so I grabbed a set of HQ 2.5 inch props out of my box of miscellaneous props and... Um, and gave it one more chance to show its best. 3.8, look at that okay flight time. 3.85. It's 
just does not corner very. I think it's the weight. You really have to work the throttle in the turns to get sharp turns. And it's just constantly wanting to slide out. So you, yeah, like that. See, I'm pushing the throttle there to try to get it to go into the turn, but it wants to pop up when I do that. So I gotta really nose down into it. Whereas a really good setup would just cruise through the turn with just a little bit of throttle. Those original props wouldn't like that. I like this better though. I could get used to this. I would, I would maybe like to try some gem fans. Gem fan is known for their micro-sized props. They have good ones. Uh, maybe a gem fan two and a half would be good. I'm starting to get it a little bit. This is way more fun to fly than the toothpick. I gotta say. Oh, there goes my battery. I felt sad there for a minute. 3 minutes 57 and I just felt sag. Oh yeah. I like this a lot more. Yeah. Oh yeah. These, the props really were killing that guy. This is way better. Let me land it before I smoke this battery. Now that we're back from flying these quads, let me give you a couple little tips and tricks to get the most out of each of them. A couple of gotchas that I think you're going to want to be aware of. And then we'll close out the video with a sort of a summary of who is the right person who's going to like each of these quads the best. And we'll start with the full speed here. Uh, and as you saw from when I was flying it, the number one thing I think you should change about this quad is the props. The props that it comes with, I have never liked that design of prop. They're so thin at the hub. It is so easy to bend them and break them off. And on lighter quads, you can kind of get away with it because they just don't take enough energy into the crash to significantly deform the props. But on on this guy, no, that's, I think that's just absolutely the wrong prop. What is a good prop for this one? Well, you can see I'm using these HQ two and a half inch props. I don't actually think each, I mean, I haven't extensively tested these props, I, but I don't think HQ is very widely known for having really, really good two and a half inch props. I think the Avon is a very, very good micro prop design. I first flew it on the two inch Baby Hawk and it was just head and shoulders better than almost everything else out there. Another really good micro size prop is the Gem Fan Hulky. Uh, not quite as good, I think, as the Avon, but still very, very good. So just get yourself an upgraded set of props like the day you buy this and I think you'll have a better experience. The second thing you got to do after you change out the props on the full speed is unlock the video transmitter and manufacturers shipping these video transmitters locked to 25 milliwatts and locked out of certain uh, channels. I think if you are in the European Union, that, that makes sense because you guys aren't supposed to go above 25 milliwatts without a license. In the United States though, you are not supposed to be using this video transmitter at all without a license. So either you have a license and you can go ahead and unlock it or you're breaking the law by simply using it and you may as well go ahead and unlock it. The way to unlock it is to use this button, which is super annoyingly placed. There it is. Did you see it? There it is. I can't even get in there without blocking the light. Right there. That's the button that is right next to this standoff. And I can only imagine that this is just an unfortunate coincidence. The look, I couldn't even find this freaking button. <laughs> like I looked in the quick start manual and it said, press the button. And I was like, okay, where's the button? It didn't say. Eventually I found it. 
it, it is kind of nice that if you have a little screwdriver or something, you can just rest it up against the standoff and then press in and press the button. Maybe that's on purpose, in which case full speed gets credit for that clever little piece of design, but I think it's just an accident. You unlock it by holding that power up, hold that button in for, they say, 20 seconds. Hold it in for 25 or 30 seconds. When you release it, the LEDs will go blah, 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 and you'll know you've unlocked it. And it's important to do that because this guy comes with tramp telemetry, that is VTX remote control that lets you change the uh, channel and band via the Betaflight OSD. You want that, but that doesn't work until you unlock this guy. It's simply, you can't, you can't even change the channel. It's like if it's locked, you'd think it would let you change to the allowed channels, but no, it just, remote control doesn't work at all until you unlock it, which of course you're gonna need to do. You're gonna wanna do. Here on the arms, I've added some zip ties to help hold these wires down and out of the way. Uh, if they do get smacked, if they get smacked by these little props, they're probably not gonna get cut, but they can get snagged and pulled and that's not good. This will help keep them out of the way in the event of a crash. The final modification that I made that I would recommend to you is to add some sticky battery pad here on the underside, especially when the battery strap comes underneath like this the battery is just, it's not like rubbery on the inside or anything. The, the, I really am sure that if you just use this battery strap, you're gonna lose the battery in every freaking crash. This stuff that I'm using here is Umma Grip. It's uh, put out by Tommy Tibahia, um, Umma God. Um, you can get this, it's, it does work very well, but there's cheaper stuff out there. Just any kind of rubbery, sticky gel pad, battery pad, and you definitely, I think, gonna benefit from having that, keep you from losing your battery in a crash. As for the Emacs Freestyle, Honestly, there's not as much to say for tweaking this guy. It, Emacs just has a really, really good track record of developing very, very good ready-to-fly, bind-and-fly quads. It started with the Emacs Hawk, which was just a shockingly good 5-inch racing or even freestyle quad, and it has just continued. This one is, is really freaking good. Um, the only things that I like might even complain about are the antenna, I don't know why Emacs just likes to leave their antennas dangling out where they could get chopped up. And I always say, maybe I have something I don't know that they don't get chopped up, but I, I was concerned about it. What I did is I just took and I passed the antenna down here underneath the bottom, and that helps keep it out of the way of the props. Uh, a more secure thing to do would be to just take a zip tie and heat shrink it to a zip tie. I just didn't have time to do that. The other thing that stands out is you can see here in a crash that my uh, negative battery strap got a little bit cut. The props are not actually strong enough to actually chop the wire, I think, but um, it definitely cut the insulation, and thank goodness it was the negative and not the positive, or we could have gotten into a fiery situation. You can see how I've addressed that by taking a zip tie here and just zip tying this. I left a little bit of slack because the batteries may need a little bit of slack to kind of get, get held in place, but this is just helps make sure, absolutely sure, that that's not gonna end up in the props like it did. I've also added some gel pad here as well, more almond grip to help hold those batteries in place. Again, I just don't trust these little, see it's not rubberized or anything, I just don't trust that to hold the batteries. So that brings us to the end of the video, and as always, the question, should you buy it? Or, in this case, which one should you buy? Or should you not buy either of them? In the case of the full speed, this guy, I, I'm not sure why you really call this a toothpick other than that it's a marketing term that is getting very hot because I don't think I would call this a toothpick. Kebab gives about, I think he actually gives the oddly specific weight of 73 grams as the ideal weight for a toothpick. We are all getting close to double that weight here. This is a really fun flying quad. It is a really nice little quad uh, for, for racing about or, or light freestyle. I love the fact that on the 4S batteries, you get very little voltage seg. Even when pushing it, you can fly it pretty fast. And even when I put on these more aggressive props, the motors didn't get hot or anything. It flew really, really well. It, I think it lacks a little bit of control in turns. It felt like it wanted to swing out. And as I, as you heard me mention, I was constantly having to push the nose down and, and kind of push it into the turns. So my gut feeling would be that it's a little bit heavy for what it's doing, but it's really nice, durable frame. I was just very happy overall with the experience of flying it once I got it a little bit tweaked. And I liked flying it a lot more than some other two inch or two and a half inch quads I've flown. 
Um, I think mostly down to the fact that it has higher voltage battery and a bigger battery. That also is why it's heavier, though, and why it's flying worse. So this may not be the perfect quad in this uh, in this weight class and in this size class, but it's definitely worth looking at, especially given the fact that it comes with a 600 milliwatt video transmitter, which means that you're just you're going to be able to really push range to the point. Well, frankly, the receiver is the limiting factor here. The little full speed receiver that came in here, I wouldn't call it full range. So maybe it would benefit from an improved receiver. The Emacs Freestyle has a totally legitimate claim to the category of toothpicks, despite the fact that they didn't actually name it a toothpick. This guy, they named a toothpick, and I don't really think it is a toothpick. What is a toothpick? I think a toothpick means that you are flying something similar to this. You're in a similar sort of weight, feel, and, and, and agility and nimbleness and speed as one of these little guys, but just a little more by removing the ducted props and going to a slightly larger prop size. And this guy gives it to you. This guy is like flying like the best performing one of these that you've ever flown. A lot of people are going to look at the freestyle and ask whether it's good as a first quad. And some answer yes and some answer no. As far as durability goes, this guy is exceptional. Frankly, I think that the Freestyle is going to be maybe even more durable than something like this because the plastic frame here eventually does take damage. The props do wear out and the motors do take a beating. These motors are pretty, they're pretty well designed. They have solid shafts. It's a pretty durable platform overall. However, as a beginner, I'm not sure how great I would feel about the open props, especially if you intend to fly indoors. I definitely would lean to something with closed props like, oh wait, let's not forget. <laughs> this is the Tiny Hawk. And I think somebody getting their very first quad has to think really hard about what they want, whether the Freestyle or the Tiny Hawk is going to be the right one for you. The Tiny Hawk is a little bit less powerful, a little bit less agile, but still a really, really good flying quad. Definitely way more suited to indoor flying. I just never like flying open props indoors. I mean, it's just my thing. And definitely a lot safer if there's a chance of you crashing this into yourself or your pet or anything like that. The Full Speed Toothpick Pro comes in at about $130, and at that price point, I think a lot of people are going to be seriously looking at some 3-inch quads that come in at around the $140 price point, such as the Diatone GT349. There's a very, very valid argument that a 3-inch, that extra half inch of prop, makes such a big difference in the speed, performance, and dangerousness of the quad. A lot of people are going to feel that's not a very comp fair comparison to make, but a lot of people are going to be asking themselves, should I go with a two and a half inch or should I go with a three inch? And for 10 bucks more, the fact that you could step up to significantly more speed and handling, some people are going to feel that that's worth it. This guy isn't a toothpick. And as a result, this guy, if it, if it were a toothpick, it would be the most high performance toothpick that there is, but it's just too big and heavy to be qualify as a toothpick. So I feel like at this point, full speed has kind of put themselves into the weight and performance category where for 10 bucks more, the buyer might just decide to step up to a three inch and get a little bit more. That is gonna do it for this review though. Let me know what you think. And to be honest with you, I almost feel bad putting this video out because this is such a fast moving category. I already know of like three other quads that have come out or are coming out in the time since I got these guys across my desk that are just probably gonna be even better. I don't know. But you got to do what you can do, and here's my review of these quads. If you want to purchase one of these guys, can I remind you, this is, this is my full-time job. I know. Can you believe it? And one of the ways, if you value that, if, if you think I earned it, one of the ways you can help support me is there's links down in the video description. Those links are affiliate links. When you click one of those links and then make any purchase, I get a small commission, and it's one of the ways I support myself. You don't have to buy these products, and this goes for everybody, not just me. You, anybody, you click their affiliate link, you make any purchase, and it's an, they get a small commission. It's an easy way that you can support the people, the YouTubers and so forth that you want to help support. Maybe I'm one of them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of these quads. Which is the best one? Is there, what, let me ask you this. What is the quad that competes with the full speed that I should be looking at next? Okay, and... Has the Emacs Freestyle basically made the Tiny Hawk S obsolete? Hmm, what do you think?
Let me know in the comments. Happy flying.